Jesse Winker. Yeah. Doing some things, but Ty France. Watch. We said it last week. Every time we have Mariner highlights, <laughs> Ty France is going yard or hitting doubles. Yeah, Roflo. I, I I think you can certainly learn how to hit. I, I I'm a testament to. I didn't learn until I was 30 years old and got unlocked by Rudy Jaramillo in Texas. And then there's other guys who just roll out of bed Christmas morning and could just rake. I bet you Ty France was his best little league hitter, best high school hitter, best college hitter. And I'm going to give you some numbers in the minor leagues. We chronicled Brandon Belt and what he was able to do in the minor leagues across three levels before he arrived at the big leagues. There's some eye-popping minor league numbers for Ty France. And to listen to Jesse Winker, I was reading an article, is he bursting on the scene? Is the rest of the world starting to understand who Ty France is? Jesse Winker says his peers, and we've known about him since high school, this guy has always been a baller. He just didn't fit the profile. Where is he going to play? Is he going to play third, second? He's kind of undersized at first. Is he? Jeff Bagwell's a Hall of Famer. Looks eerily similar to him. So let's dive in. The one thing is, if you hit, they will find a spot for you. And this guy has hit all his life. Mm. Okay? And he had a monster weekend. Lauren talked about it. Eight for 11. Look at him. To run that back real quick for me. You're four for five. You're feeling as good as you can possibly feel. Pause. This pitch is kind of located middle in. This is almost a pitch that maybe you're pulling down the left field line when you're really feeling frisky and cheating. Look at him stay through this baseball and drive it out to the left center gap. That's perfection. And I think the rest of the world would have known who Ty France was before this weekend. If he didn't get drilled last year, this is a guy who crowds the plate. So pause this. This is 2021. Okay? He was raking. Got out of the box for Seattle last year and was raking. And then on April 13th of last year, he's facing Dustin May. Run it. And gets destroyed with like a 100-mile-an-hour two-seamer right there. 98 right on the forearm. And then he had to go on the IL. He tried to play through it. There was a lot going on, but you know that shut him down. So pause. So I was saying to myself, he got hit 27 times last year. Yeah. Is that going to affect him? Is he going to get off the dish? Is he doing anything a little bit differently? you got to stay healthy. The best ability is availability. Well, no, he's sticking his nose in there. He's standing in the exact same spot that he's always stood. Okay? Now let's go in to what he's done since he's come over to Seattle. S-Rod, bring up that board real quick, and then we'll get into Napoli and Michael Young. Jerry DePoto has made a ton of moves, okay? Trader Jerry, that's what they call him, but the bottom line is, is he has liked this guy from day one and wanted to go get him in a trade, and he has not disappointed. This is only in 89 games with the pods, okay? 191. I want to read you his numbers from El Paso in 2019 in AAA. Who does this? 296 at bats, 399, almost hit 400, 27 homers, 89 ribbies with a 1247 OPS. There's like uh, nobody who does that in the minor league. So obviously you got to find a spot for him. Jerry DePoto wanted him with the Mariners. He was able to move him. Remember, they had Evan White at first base, a guy that they drafted in the first round and gave a multi-year deal to. And he has just, I mean, supplanted him at that position. So when I watch Ty France, there's a bunch of things that jump off the page, okay? Let's get back into the split screen. Pause it real quick. Why do I bring up Mike Napoli and Mikey Young? Well, when you see Ty France, I think the body structure there, the ability to drive the ball, nobody's Napoli. Okay, he's one of the coolest guys that's ever played the game. Just getting it, streets, hitting bombs, all of it. But then he also talks about, in my back pocket, I could shoot the ball the other way. Mikey Young would cheat, take chances, try and go deep, but he knew he had base hit to right in his back pocket. So he's kind of a, a body type of Napoli with some pop like Napoli, and then kind of thinking, small-minded, like Michael Young, thinking, I know, and you can run this, I know I got base hit to right whenever I need it, so maybe I can take chances in certain counts. And that's what he's been able to do. But when you can do this consistently, Liam Hendricks, 97, I don't have to get big. I know I can push the ball the other way, run that back. I mean, that is so gorgeous. 
That's a breaking ball. You talk about not being out front and being on time, and that's what he preaches to himself. If I'm on time, that's an 0-2 count. If I'm on time, pause this, things are going to be all right. Something I find interesting with him is the natural motion, at least for me, when you're getting into a rhythm and timing would be for this top hand to be moving in this direction. And what you're seeing now, this kind of creates that old school down on it, down on the baseball, which guys are not doing as much now. He almost is counterclockwise, almost presenting like Chris Taylor to create this, I'm gonna put my bat on plane back here, which I think is pretty interesting. Run it. Run that back so people can see that. It's kind of an interesting waggle. It's not, that's not a natural move. He's processing and telling himself that I want to get my barrel in the zone as quick as possible. Take a look at this, 2022 weighted runs created plus, and that's probably by fan graphs, the best offensive metric in the game. The plus sign is park adjusted, right? He's playing out there in Seattle. Not an easy park to go deep. 100 is an average big leaguer. First off, check out Byron Buxton, who we talked about. He's 300. But he's on pace with Mike Trout, Ty Franch, and don't sleep on G-Man Choi. All right. Row flow. Guy can hit. Very good stuff.